Good afternoon again. As I, as I said a minute ago, my name is Damon Latanzi, and I head up our sales team here at DMI. And today we're having a conversation with uh, Rich Rubino, who is a partner in Rubino & Lang, a firm that produces uh, over $60 million in annual annuity sales and a good chunk of life insurance business, as well as some uh, other insurance products. So, Rich, thanks for, thanks for being here with well, us today. Thanks for inviting me. So just, just by way of um, a background, my slide will cooperate here. Uh, I am not Brian Donahue, as you probably guessed. Brian uh, had an emergency call he had to be on, but um, uh, that's fine because the focus of today's webinar is really Rich and Rich's process. And you know, Rich has been in the business for, for what, Rich, 20, 30 years? Well, uh, Sam and I, uh, my partner Sam Lang and myself have been in the business for you know almost 25 years. Sam is um, 20 years younger than I, mm -hmm. so I am like starting to transition out of out of the business, you know, and a lot has to do with um, hey, it's it's almost that time, and uh, some of the things have to do with relevance, like the average age of our clients are maybe 63 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm older than that. So um, sometimes I feel like they're looking at me and saying, well, you're not as relevant. Where are you going to be when I really need you? So I'm doing more of the marketing stuff now. Sam sees probably 99.9% .9 of the people that come in and closes mm -hmm. the people that come in. So um, and his support team is everybody that works in the office. So you know, Sam and I are partners, but I my role is limited to uh, basically marketing, seminars, radio, right. writing things, writing ads, writing script, writing the vines that we did with right. Susan Warnick, right. uh, coming up with ideas. And it's, um, and I must say that I, I'm getting better at that because I'm able to focus more on it than I used to because I used to do more than one thing. I used to see people and now I don't see anybody. I just think of things of how to better Plus, you guys are paying me right, right. to that, do this. That, 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 that always helps. Help. Right. Yeah. So that, that brings us to today's topic where we're going to talk a little bit about uh, specialization and how that has been an important component of how Rich and Sam have, have built their business. But just really quickly, I just want to talk about we do these webinars because we're trying to bring best practices from very successful advisors and share those best practices with other advisors. Now, you may not be able to put every element into your own practice, but there's some good core fundamental ideas about how you can run your own business better. Not just how you can be a better advisor, but how you can be a better business person to, to help grow that business. And here at DMI, our goal is to help you do that and in turn to have you write your life and annuity business through us. Right? That's why we bring successful guys like Rich onto these calls is to try to increase the value that we, we deliver to you. But but Rich, why don't you talk about this um, this great story that that we talked about uh, well, we, uh, a few weeks ago? Right, we call it the birthday process, yeah. and every every successful business um, has a process that they do. And I tell the story about uh, you know my wife asked me what I wanted for my birthday. I said, you know, I'd like to shadow the chef at this very good restaurant because every time we go there, and you know, I love the food. I like to shadow them invite eight people for dinner, and shadow them all day. And then when it comes to make the meal for us eight people, go in the kitchen and see how everybody makes that meal. So she made the arrangement, paid the guy for the meals, paid him to shadow. I was with him from 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We went to dinner. You know, about 7.30, 8 o'clock, he invites me in the kitchen. She says, now we're making your meal for your table. Right. And in the kitchen, he's the, he's the chef. And he doesn't cook anything. I thought the chef did all the cooking. Yeah, yeah, me too. He doesn't do anything. There's a pasta station. There's a salad station. There's a meat guy. There's a fish guy. There's uh, somebody that heats the plates up. There's, some, there's a, a fry guy. There's all these people that are just focused on their particular job. So when a plate is set, before the plate goes out to the consumer, the chef looks at it and makes sure that it's perfect. And then the waiter or waitress takes it out to the people at the table. And all the plates for that table are delivered at, at one time. So everybody eats together. So it got me thinking about 
how we run our business. Everybody in our business, there are, um, Sam produces, she's 99.9% .9 of all the people. Yep. And we're on track this year to, again, have a, a great year doing over 50 million. So um, everybody in our office has a specific job. Who processes business? Who arranges for the seminars? Who uh, confirms appointments? Who calls all the leads? Who um, follows up on money issues? Who follows up on the second appointments? Mm -hmm. Who deals with buyer's remorse? You know, the, the Sam is like a surgeon. All he all we want him to do is be in that room and sell somebody. We really don't want him to do anything else because that's what he's good at. I mean, of course he does a lot of other things, sure. but the process is focus and specialization. And I can even see, you know, with myself, like I focus on the radio show. That's one of the things that, yes. that I do. And um, I write the show. I produce the show, and I want to know what the results is on a Monday morning right. when people come in. So if um, 30 people call, that's great. That's, that's great. If um, 10 people call on a Monday, it's my job to say, and it's my responsibility to say, now, that's my fault. How could I make it better? Sam doesn't say do it. I mean, it's my focus. That's, that's your what job, I, that's right? Your my specialty. Job. That's my specialty. So talk for a minute. You didn't just wake up one day 25 years ago and have a staff of six or seven. Talk maybe about some of the incremental steps you made. You know, first of all, to you and you're just selling and you're processing and you're, you're every department. How do you make the step to, you know, the next level and the next level and so on from, from when you're starting out and you're literally doing everything? How do you do that? Well, I mean, first, you know, you have to have an office. You know, you have to have an office, and who do you need for an office? The first person you need for an office is someone to answer the phones. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, you know, this is this is Mary. This is John. I'd like to speak to Rich. Okay, just a minute. Let me get him for you. So you don't want to answer your own phone. Hello, it's me. And that person could help process business. They keep appointments. They keep your appointments set. So they have to be a multi. They have to be a multi. A, a jack of all trades. A jack of all trades, and then and then after that person, then hopefully you need another person. You have to identify what takes up your time, and and you're not needed doing it. So maybe processing business is the next thing. Yeah. Uh, somebody get that app and following through the system to process that business. Maybe making phone calls for you is the next thing. You know, uh, I used to hate to make phone calls. You know, because I would, if somebody answered the phone every time I called, I didn't mind it. Right. But for me to call and, and leave a message and then call that person back again, I couldn't stand it. So what do you do? You hire somebody to do that. And you, you give them incentives so that the amount of appointments that they make, you pay them for those appointments because you know your closing ratio. So that might be somebody that you have, and that could have a dual role of helping processing business, uh, sitting in the room with you, taking notes. Uh, so it, it really, it, I think it starts with, you know, how, when you view other people's business, um, what do you see first? Mm -hmm. You see a receptionist. Mm -hmm. When you call them, what do you hear first? You hear someone other than you answer the phone. So that's that's the first step, and then there's other pieces of our business that you really want to get rid of that are time consuming, and you want to have other people other people do. Like filling out the applications. Well, filling out the applications. I mean, when when Sam's in a room, he he doesn't fill out any of the applications. He doesn't call anybody. He just has a whiteboard, and he sells on the whiteboard, and then um, all the applications, all the process, chase the money where it is is done by. Uh, there's two members that we have, John and Ryan, that they do that, and that's that's their job. Right, is making sure that the money comes over, and the application is is filled out correctly. Then the application is then goes to Beth, and Beth makes sure everything is on the application is perfect before it's submitted, and she follows the business through. Right, um, I get a report once a week as to what the status is on every single case that's in process, what we're looking for. And if you see the 
timeline is too long between the beginning and the end, then you know who to go to. You say, Beth, what's going on here? Right, right. And she writes it down. So she's making pasta. You know, and it's something wrong with the pasta, you go to Beth. And then talk a little bit about you. You guys do a lot of workshops and you're on the radio. And um, you've got a marketing pro I mean, besides you being the creative mind behind it, talk a little bit about uh, Bobby's role and what she's doing there. Well, Bobby's sort of a, like more of a jack of all trades. She's the uh, ultimate multitasker. You know, she could do three things at one time. So um, a lot of it has to do with helping run the office. You know, if Sam's paying bills, she's sending them out. She's dealing with that stuff. Right. She's also dealing with some of the marketing stuff, making sure that the um, uh, all the shows that we're doing for the radio uh, are delivered properly, and they're all scheduled, you know, ahead of time. We have some, like now we have some generic shows that will probably run during the summer because, you know, it's hard to hard enough to fit the time to do them during the winter, but in the summer it's even harder. So we know uh, in June we have to double up recording shows and what's generic shows. So I have to know how many shows I need to write and produce to get through the summer. So that's part of our job. Right. Uh, plus we're revising a book. You're helping us yep. revise that book. So it's um, what's going on with this. Is somebody proofing it? Uh, let's get somebody to do the cover design. So she'll deal with that. Bobby just do this. So she's, and then she runs the seminars. You know, she makes arrangements, runs the seminars. She's there. She's at the seminar. She sets up. She takes names. Uh, puts things in the database. Well, I think she and someone else put things in the database. I mean, she is very efficient. So um, that's what she does, and she does it well. But if something goes wrong with one of those things, you know who to go to and say, why did that, why did that happen? And, you know, either, either it's a mistake or there's, uh, we have to correct something. I mean, Nothing just works forever, Damon. You know right, that. Right. And I, I think if you, as advisors are on this call, if you think about how much time it takes to fix a problem, right? Let's say you did a 1035 exchange and it, you know, it didn't go, it, the client maybe wants to back out, whatever it is. How much time is spent chasing around paperwork? Is that time that's best spent by the, the surgeon, the advisor, by the chef? Or is Not that time all. better spent by someone who specializes no. in that, right? I mean, I mean that's what, I mean, you know, Sam introduces uh, John and Ryan, who are always, first of all, all our meetings, all our client meetings, first meeting, second meeting, there's always two people in the meeting. Why? Why? Sam, Sam's there, well, he, first of all, you have, you have to keep notes. Yeah. And um, after the sale is closed, somebody has to fill out an application. So Sam doesn't fill out that application. He leaves the room. And the application is filled out, and it gives John and Ryan an opportunity to get their own rapport with that client so that, and they would say, if you have any questions about anything, make sure to call me, all right? And and they sort of take over dealing with that stuff. Sam would deal with, you know, real buyer's remorse. Sure. Hey, Sam, you really got to call this guy because he's on, he's, he's not, he's getting off the fence. He's not like on the fence yeah. anymore. On the fence I could deal with, but he's getting off the fence. So Sam deals with that stuff, but for the normal, um, has it work? Could you give me this? You have to sign this. We forgot to have you sign that. I'll call this guy to tell him to hurry this along. I mean, John and Ryan do all that stuff. They do all of that background stuff, 99% of it. They also make all the calls. If we have calls from uh, seminar attendees, we we'll call from the radio. They will call all of those people because the the book. Our book, Sam's book, has to be filled every day. Every day, there has to be four people for him to see. Appointments, right? Four, four appointments. appointments. Right. Uh, first appointment, second appointment. Um, a lot of the review appointments, unless there's new money, he won't even see those people. John and I will see the people. Because his job is making... Front making, end, making the sale. Making the sale. How do you know when it's time to add another staff member or how did you decide hey we need we've got two people we've got to get to three or we've got to get to four how do you know when the time is right for that because it costs it costs money you got to pay that person a salary and maybe benefits how do you know when when to do that um, I mean that's you know 
a lot of things I think come about by uh, by default. I hate doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, well, what's the solution? Either you don't do it, or you hire somebody to do it. I hate mowing my lawn. I just don't like it. So um, I'll hire a guy to come mow my lawn. I hate making phone calls. I hate to. It, it's a waste of time. And um, so you you have to spend money to be more efficient. If you try to do everything, there's just not enough time in the day or a week for you to do everything as efficiently as you possibly can. So you have to start someplace and any any good business is is overstaffed. You know, if you go to Motel 8, and I don't think I've ever been in the Motel right. 8, there's one clerk. There's one guy behind the there's desk. There's one guy behind the desk. You go to the Four Seasons, how many people do you see in the Four swarm, Seasons? A swarm of people. They, everybody has a uniform. and. So would you rather own the Motel 8 or would you rather own the Four Seasons? Four Seasons. The four Seasons, of course. So you have, to, you have to hire people in order to do all those things to make you, to make you good at it. And the, the leap of spending money, taking money theoretically out of your pocket to give it to somebody else, that's the hardest leap people could. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary, you know. But it, the scary part, like if you're going to pay somebody $50,000 a year for a job, well, you don't have to give them the fifty on the first day they start. Right. You got to give them, you know, a thousand dollars. You know, a yeah. thousand uh, dollars a week. You know, four thousand. Mm -hmm. So, um, how much do you have to sell to? How much to, in order to do that? And how much more can you sell to make? Because if you're paying somebody a thousand dollars, you want to be able to put two thousand dollars in your pocket right. because of that person's helping you. That's that's how you become a big producer. Right. So, if, in other words, if I hire another staff member, that might free up time that I could spend marketing myself, or that I could That's spend right. seeing more people, or that I could spend doing something that will drive the sales needle as opposed to That's chasing right. around. That's right. Doing paperwork. something that that you're only you can do. You know, anybody could fill out an application. Well, except me, I can't fill out an application. <laughs> but um, a lot of people could fill out an application, but there's only certain people that can sell that are salespeople. Yeah. So, what? Any final advice or words of uh, uh, of, of wisdom for folks? Is there maybe you know a lot well, of our advisors are one one advisor all by him or herself, or maybe there's an advisor and an assistant. What, what kind of? I think uh, I think uh, yeah, what I do a lot is I observe different businesses because like just like the restaurant I tell you about, yeah. it's no different than our business that you have a a quality restaurant and why is it that way? Well. Is people that are focused on their jobs. So look at your look at your job, look at your tasks, and see what the first thing is to do to get rid of that task to give you more time. Because sometimes people do these tasks to spin their wheels and just have a feeling that they were productive, but they're mm -hmm. really not productive. They're just doing a task that anybody right. could do. So look around, ask people. I mean, come in and see you guys. I mean, yeah. and they can introduce you to people like me, people like Fred, and say, well, how do you guys do it? And you, and you have a sit down. I mean, you you have to observe and and build your business. Did you ever? I think I know the answer to this, but did you ever make a mistake during that process? You hire someone, they didn't work out. Oh, absolutely. Or, right. And what do you so do? I, uh, you fire them. And then you, you <laughs> kind of pick up the pieces and move on, right? Well, Doesn't mean you know, that the idea was you know, you know, you need that. You know, knowing um, what works and knowing what doesn't work is just as important. Right. You know, if you try something and it doesn't work, well, that's that's a good thing. We know now it doesn't work. Uh, we know now the profile of the type of person we want for that particular job. The person that processes our, our business, Beth, she has an accounting background. She was a bookkeeper for a company. So she's used to dealing with numbers and being precise mm -hmm. about things. Uh, Bobby is unique in her own way that she could multitask. She could, you know, do four things at one time and get them all done. Uh, what, is, what is interesting between the two of them is that their desks at the end of the day and even during the day are immaculate. Hmm. There is no clutter. And um, so, so they're very efficient in what they do. And you can tell how a person works, I think, by looking at their desk at the end of the day and even while they're working. If it's all scattered around, then 
they're scattered around. Right, <laughs> so right, right. If it's all neat, then uh, they're neat and, and they're efficient. So, you know, you judge people by uh, observations. Right. Good. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's hold there. We'll have Rich back for many more webinars. And if, you've, if anything that Rich has said has resonated with you, which, which I'm sure it has, uh, there's a lot more information that, that we can provide for qualified advisors. We can have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, call with Rich and provide some direct coaching on a number of areas, not just on what we talked about today, but, but a, a firm that's doing as much business as they are has so many great ideas and experiences they can share uh, through, through, through their partnership here with DMI. So you see our, our contact info up there on the uh, screen. If you're looking for a next step, it's to, to give us a call. Call, call me, call uh, one of our sales consultants here and give us an opportunity to talk with you about your business and we can figure out, hey, is it, is it appropriate, does it make sense to, to talk to Rich or talk to our marketing department and, and let us help you uh, take your business to the next level. So Rich, thanks for your time. As always, appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. And thanks to our advisors for being on the call and we'll, we'll see you again on an upcoming webinar. Thank you.